Welcome back to another edition of Austin's American Flyer, where today we take a look at some technical and some fun aspects of composing and shooting good layout pictures. Stick around and enjoy what we've got in store for you today on Austin's American Flyer. Well, hello and welcome back to another edition of Austin's American Flyer, where today I want to try to do a little something different with each of you. Um, and that is talk a little bit about how to basically set up and then take nice pictures on your layout. Um, most of us have phones anymore with cameras on them and uh, most of us know how to point it at something and take a shot. And while there's something to be said about having those pictures, um, most of the time they don't turn out to be the kind of pictures that you might want to see in a magazine. They're more the kind of thing you'd want to see in a family album or they're nice to scroll through and say, oh, remember when. Um, they have value. Um, but what we're talking about today is kind of getting beyond that, getting beyond the snapshot and getting more into composition. Now, I want to say right off the bat, um, today I'm going to give you a couple examples of things that I've done, but I want to make sure that you all hear me say this. Um, this is a creative process. What I'm showing you today is by no means the only way to set things up. It's by no way means the only way that you want to establish the balance in a picture. In other words, creativity is a huge piece of this. And so what I'm showing you today is actually limited by my creativity. So I hope the video today spurs you to think creatively, to think what, what would it look like if I did that? And let's your mind run wild because um, that's what makes this so fun. There's not as necessarily a set way to do it. Yeah, there are some technical things that are good to know about how to take a picture and about what your camera on your phone or your, your handheld camera can do. Um, but there's a huge piece of this that is all you. It's all creative. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that today, but, but please always keep in mind I'm showing you one way to do it that's, again, limited by my small frame of creative reference. And I don't want that to limit yours because your creative frame of reference is going to be completely different than mine. And that's a good thing. All right. Having said that, let's get started. And um, first of all, let's take a look at what I've got going on here. Uh, I have a phone with a camera on it on a tripod. Um, that's important because once you have a scene set up, you're going to want to take some pictures. You want to take them and put them on a bigger screen so you can look at them, evaluate. Yeah, this doesn't work. This does work. This is out of focus. This is in focus. What's my balance like? What's my color like? On and on and on. There's so many things to look at. And the more you do this, the more quickly you'll set scenes up and think, aha, I got it. Or, well, it's not quite right. But especially if you're like me and you're trying to get started in this, you're going to, going to want to take a lot of pictures. You're going to want to reevaluate a lot of times. And as you do that, you're going to start to get some really, really good products, some really good shots out of what you're doing. Okay, so that's one piece. Another piece is um, you want to look at, again, setting up a scene. Now here I have the terminal shed, the American Flyer Stock terminal shed. And there's a couple things about it that are kind of cool. Uh, number one, it's got the red girders and the clear to opaque see-through top, so you can get some lighting effects down through there. Um, on the side here, you've got three openings. And one of the things that kind of caught my eye about this particular setup is it's almost like you've got three vignettes in one picture. And so I played around a little bit with that, and we'll, we'll look at that here in a little bit more. Another thing that you want to think about is elements that are in the shot. Okay, in this shot, uh, what do you see? We have some people, we have a boxcar, we have a cow, a cow, yeah. We have a tree um, up here in front. Now, let's, let's think about that. Now, the fact that there's a cow coming out of a boxcar in a typically seen passenger station is a little bit weird. But what I wanted to do is do something a little unexpected. And so here we have what I hope to, to be a family. We've got a mom, a dad, a little kid, and they're talking to the cow. They're checking out this cow. 
Now, if, if you have the catalyst car accessory, you know that <laughs> the cows go in and the cows come out. It's not like there's a whole bunch of cows in there. But for this particular scene, it looks kind of fun to have that cow sticking his head out and getting some attention, talking to the, talking to the family. And uh, so that kind of sets the stage. Now, you see, I put this little tree off to the side. Now, the tree is green. We want to look at colors. We have a red boy, we have a red box car with a white cow. We have a blue, um, two shades of blue on the mom and gray on the dad. So let's just keep those colors in mind, okay? Um, and then behind it, uh, you see a K5 uh, Pacific. More, we may see more or less of that depending on how we, we adjust the camera. And then beyond the front of the, the K5, we see three people waiting on the platform of the station. And that's kind of a point of interest that helps remind us, hey, wait a minute, there, do, there are passenger trains that come through here. This isn't some sort of a freight yard or a cattle stop. Um, there are actually people waiting to get on the train. So that's kind of an important piece. And then beyond that, again, kind of as, as a point of interest, there's another boxcar. Notice the color. It's yellow, okay? And notice the lady that's waiting for the train. She's yellow. So we have this little bit of interest that as you're, I looks at the picture, first of all, you're probably gonna notice what's up front, what's closest. But as you scan across the picture, you're gonna notice, hey, wait, there's a yellow, oh, that's a, that's a lady in the background. And wait, there's a yellow boxcar. Wait, what's going on in the boxcar? Wait, is that a, is that a guy sweeping out the boxcar? So anyhow, this, this idea here is that we wanna kinda of draw our viewer into the scene and then give them a reason to keep looking around. What will they discover? Does it make any sense? Is it just complete randomness? And again, I'm not here to tell you what to do because in some ways, this is a bit random that we have this freight activity going on at a passenger station, but it's fun and it kind of is unusual and it's unexpected. And when that's done within reason, it captures our attention. All right, let's talk a little bit about texture. In this picture, um, again, let's go back to our tree here. We have a tree and it's kind of got that uh, prickly rough texture, which is much different than the smooth side of the station, the smooth sides of the boxcar, smooth sides of the engine, everything is pretty smooth. And then if you look beyond the boxcar in the picture, what do you see? You see more trees. So again, we've kind of got balanced on either side of this view, kind of these same pieces that kind of give us uh, bookends, if you will, uh, again, this is something that I wanted to try and see if it works or not. You, as an observer, can tell me, what do you think? Is that a cool effect or is it not? Now, behind all of this is a white backdrop. Now, this is something I did because if I remove this backdrop, you're going to see curtains, you're going to see just the stuff that happens in this basement train room. And because I don't have any high-powered uh, Photoshop or editing equipment, I wanted to give myself as many helps as I could. And so I did that with a backboard. <laughs> and you can get uh, foam core, which is real lightweight and real nice to use. Unfortunately, I don't have any, but I do have some quarter inch uh, MDF white board. This stuff is super heavy, um, but I have some. And so I use it, I move it around, and I take it up, I put it down. So that's one thing. And I also should just mention, there's one other thing I did to this layout to give myself a fighting chance. I have clear acrylic um, borders, uh, railings, if you will, that go around the layout, keep things from accidentally falling to the floor. Um, while you can see through that, it's really hard to not get a glare. And so uh, I just took it out of the way because that's just one obstacle that I can remove. Um, get the picture set up, take some camera shots, see what I think, and then when it's all said and done, put it back up, not a big deal. All right, so that's some of the structural type setup kinds of things to think about. And again, these are all elements you can play with. You can, and I invite you to do this, I invite you to, to set some stuff up, take 20 or 30 shots of it, you know, move things around, move your position of your camera, try focusing in on different things, try adjusting your lighting, and then put it onto a computer or a TV screen where it's real big and you can take a look at it and see if anything captures your imagination. See if it works, see, see if you can say, hey, you know what, I think there might be something to this. 
If not, make an adjustment. Pull one car out, put something else in, change some colors. Um, maybe the vantage point needs to shift around, or maybe you need to go and start completely over. Um, sometimes a grenade's a nice option. <laughs> um, so anyhow, that's, that's some of the setup things I wanted to mention with this particular scene. Oh, one other thing I should mention is um, I have two different, actually three different KD cars, and I wanted to use the Katie car again because it's got the bright yellow. It kind of plays off the lady's dress. But I was very selective in the Katie car that I chose because what you can't tell is out of the shot is an older Katie car where the graphics are worn off. And so it's, it's a fine car, but it doesn't pop. The one that I used is one that I picked up that has very little play time, very little run time on it. And so the graphics are really crisp on it. There's not scratches, there's not dirt. And so again, that's a really good image um, to put in a scene like this. All right, so now let's go ahead and I'm gonna move into focusing in now on our setup. Now you can do this with different kinds of software. You can take a shot and you can lighten some areas and darken some other areas and that kind of thing. What I wanted to do though, is in the Katie box car, um, I wanted to make sure that it had enough light in it. So I have this little um, baseball cap um, LED attachment uh, that you can put on a baseball cap to help you see. And what I did is I just put that here where it's out of the camera's view. Actually, I think, it, yeah, I put it upside down and I just have it angled so it shoots up into the top of the box car. And what that does is that gives me a little bit of light on the guy's face. Again, you can't really make out a lot of details, but because it's got a little bit of lighting on it, that's gonna be super helpful. Again, I've got lighting overhead, and then I've got that little bit of a spotlight there. So now let's go to the camera. You're gonna to wanna to do some research to find out the particulars of your camera on your phone or or your DSLR, whichever kind of camera you use. Um, with my particular camera, this is a Pixel 5a. Um, it's got two lenses on it, and we want to have as much depth of field, which is uh, DOF is, is what you see in articles that talk about depth of field. But basically what that means is your images up front and your images at the back are all in focus, okay? Um, if you zoom, zoom into something real tight, you can get something up front in the middle or at the back that's really clear, but then everything else is blurry. And that's a, that's a shallow depth of field. So when we're taking pictures like this, we wanna have, for the most part, we wanna have a, as deep a depth of field as we can get. So one of the things that I did is I played around with this, this phone. And what I found is if I zoom, get to the zoom feature here, if I start zooming, up and down, there's a point where it just, the image jumps. Do you see that? So what that tells me is right there is where it's flipping between the lenses on the camera. Now what I know about this camera or this phone is if I stay at the first spot before it jumps to the second, that's the greatest depth of field. That means that the chances of having everything in the shot in focus is going to be as high as possible. So that's where I want to be. I want to be before it jumps in that second that second stage. However, when I'm first getting things set up, it doesn't it doesn't hurt you to zoom all the way in, and then you know you can touch a typically you touch something and you can get it in better focus. So there I'm checking my box car. Is is it in focus? It is. Now I'm going to zoom back out, and on this particular setting, it's going to be about one. 1.0 or 0.9 percent zoom so right there is going to be my greatest depth of field now what i like to do is then touch it right here again to make sure that my focus is there it's going to be as crystal clear as i can and then i take a picture all right now after i take the picture then i come over here and i view it and i zoom in manually okay uh, those folks seem to be 
pretty good and sharp. I can read Pacific there on the boxcar. That's good. How about back in here? How are we looking? Slightly blurry, but not too bad. Uh, valve gear on the side of the K5 is nice and sharp. Okay, the letters on the KD are real nice and clear, so that's good. I would say this, this shot has a pretty good depth of field. Now, in final editing, probably want to box it or, or clip it, you know, frame it out. So we've got the white background and, of course, get rid of the stuff on either side. And that's going to be a pretty decent shot. Now, one other thing you want to do is, and I think this is probably true on most phones, is if you scroll up, Take your picture and just scroll up without zooming in on it you'll start to get some details back here about your f-stop and see the f-stop here is f2.2 and that's actually kind of the sweet spot so that's going to give me the greatest depth of field that i can get for this particular uh, camera on this phone so anyhow i know this is kind of a quick tour of your cameras and some ideas but uh, there's going to be an article coming up in the dispatch that's going to give you some great handholds on how to delve into this further. Um, so I hope this gets you started. I hope you start playing around with taking pictures of your trains and uh, just seeing what kind of neat, interesting things you can come up with by combining a little bit of time and your favorite American Flyer stuff. I thought it might be fun to take a look at a couple more examples of pictures that uh, I'm trying to move from a snapshot to a composed picture. So here we have a picture that includes a couple elements. We've got Sam the semaphore man. We've got a man down in front of the switching tower. We've got um, the billboard for the whistle in the background. We've got some nice graphics on a red coach uh, we've got red from the coach and the switch building and um, the light on the semaphore is red um, we've got green from the tender of the engine and the, and the carpet on the tabletop and those elements I think help it but what do you guys think of the angle it's a little bit hard because it's on a curve. So we see the silhouette, if you will, of the engine. We know based on uh, the smokestack that this has got to be a frontier style engine. The fact that tender's green. Um, but does this image work? Uh, Sam the semaphore man, he's quite a ways away. Um, you know, I kind of wrestle with this. I, I I think it's got potential, but I'm not sure it's been cooked long enough, if you will. In other words, I think this is probably an image that would benefit from taking some different angles, um, trying to play around with moving some of the objects within the scene around a little bit, and just doing some experimenting to see, is there a way, uh, if Sam is a focus, to get Sam to be more central versus being so far away? So. That's some of my feedback, but what do you think? All right, here is a second attempt. Um, here are some things that I really liked about this shot. Um, I like how there's this height difference between the foreground and the background. Um, I like the fact that uh, you can't really see the seam in my white backboard because of the light tower. Um, I like the bit of humor between a tank car being fluid and the guy sitting in the chair on the depot uh, deck there drinking something. Um, I think that's kind of funny. Um, I kind of like the colors. Um, again, the silver and the green. Um, and then you've got some browns in the background, some reds. So that's kind of cool. Um, I just don't know does this one work um, I'm I'm a little up in the air I, I see some potential although I wish the guy on the back of the tank car was maybe a little sharper but at the same time you know it may be maybe okay the way it is um, I also decided to try a, a black and white filter so what do you what do you think of this what if we take the color off the table and uh, now what does this image look like does it does it work better does it work uh, 
I don't know. I there's some some really neat things I like about the black and white, but again, it's uh, it, it in some ways it loses some of the detail um, that you get with the color being there. So I I don't know, but it's also uh, in a way more dramatic. Overall, I like this shot because. Um, it's a type of image I don't see in flyer. I don't see um, tank cars being loaded or unloaded. I don't see, you know, fuel being necessarily moved around. So from that standpoint, I like this because it's a little bit unique, even though the accessory is a flyer accessory. I kind of had fun figuring out how to get a tube that would work in the scene. Um, I rum rummaged through my desk of bits and pieces this is shrink tubing <laughs> and it worked really well uh, in this application um, so in terms of my own thoughts on this image I like it um, I like it at, for the for the reasons mentioned already um, but uh, what do you think as a viewer what what do you like about it what do you not like about it what do you think works what do you think maybe doesn't work how would you um, improve it if you're not a fan uh, would love to love to hear your thoughts on that so here's where my tenacity kicked in I was t just bound to determine that I was going to get a good picture of this tank car of the station of the guy on the tank car everything was going to be in focus it was going to be clear front to back great depth of field so i took pictures i took pictures i adjusted i took pictures i zoomed in i zoomed out i did everything i could to get that guy on the tank car in focus and here's an example of going to my other lens that has an aperture of 1.7 so it focuses in closer but as you can see the mystic is blurred the billboard on the mill is blurred i mean it, it loses depth of field in a hurry so again i went back to the drawing board i uh, kept messing with things i'd zoom in focus zoom back out get to my 2.2 f-stop which is the best aperture i have available on my phone and finally i zoomed way out took that picture and this is a result it's a tiny bit better than the first example but as you can see, the back of the tank car is in focus, but the guy on the tank car is not. So this is a literal hair pulling out experience. And because I'm reaching over things, it is really hard to get one shot, let alone 30 or 40. Anyhow, this is part of the fun, part of the challenge. And uh, I thought I'd kind of dive in a little bit deeper and just say, hey, this is kind of what you might experience. Uh, you do your best and you can only get so close. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope that uh, you found this uh, interesting, informative, and I would really solicit, I would really appreciate your feedback and comments, um, specifically about the pictures uh, at the end of the video. You know, what do you think? What do you see? What captures eye? What works? What doesn't work? And that then is a great segue to what I want to share with all of you next. The NASG is looking for people with American Flyer trains to take pictures and send those in for the magazine. So um, that's an incredible opportunity. So, so get this, you've now got some handholds, some tools, um, so that you can start taking pictures. Now, the other piece of this that's kind of important that I want to make sure is clear is the way you get this magazine is you become a member of the NASG. So to do that, you wanna go here to this website. They revise the application process. There's different levels of membership. Pick the one you want. It's gonna be real simple, real straightforward. And uh, I just wanna mention that because to get one of these magazines, you have to be a member. So it's, it's a good deal, it really, really is. Now, this, app, this magazine issue that's gonna come out in September, and I'm not sure if it's in August, September, or September, October, so I don't know that detail. I'm new, what can you say? Anyhow, that the episode or the magazine issue that has this, these pictures and then the uh, corresponding articles on taking pictures is gonna be an incredible resource for you. So if you'd like to improve your game with taking pictures just anywhere, not only of your trains, but 
of family, of your dog, of your cat, of real trains, whatever it is that you love to take pictures of, this would be a fantastic resource. Um, so again, I, I, I really want to encourage each of you to consider checking out the membership thing. And if there's any way you can swing it, please do, uh, because there's a lot of bang for your buck. All right, enough said. Until next time, take care. God bless. We'll see you. Enjoy those American Flyer trades. Bye-bye.